Hello, and welcome to the first episode of The Homebrew Guru. My name's Trevor Nestor, and my question to you is, is it possible to build a ray gun at home? Well, let's find out. First things first, I need some gloves. Alright. Alright, now that we have our safety gloves, the next step is for me to show you the ray gun. Here it comes, ready? Seems as though some of the glue has come off. Um, I'll be right back. I need to glue the stuff back on. Oh, why does the cat sh have to be right next to the power cord? And it's as good as new. In my right hand, I hold the ray gun. I'm going to show you how it works. Alright, first things first. I'm going to show you where the power section is. Right here is where I put in two AA batteries that will fire the laser. One here, and one here. Putting this thing back on, you notice that there's connections for a 9 volt battery as well. This powers the audio section of it. Yes, it makes Star Trek noises when I press the trigger. Very important. So here's the 9 volt battery. As you can see, it fits into place perfectly. Hold on a minute. There we go. Good as... Okay. Alright, next. Right here, all these black things are called capacitors. Basically what that means is they store energy. And then they release the energy in a big pulse. Alright, so next thing is the speaker with the audio. Right here is the speaker where those wonderful Star Trek noises come out. In here, we have a button for recording the sound that you want it to play. And here, we have a button for making the sound play when you want it to. This thing here is called a resonator. Basically, what happens is the flash lamp light hits the laser crystal. The laser crystal releases infrared radiation and then the infrared radiation bounces back and forth over and over eventually exiting the laser gun right here alright now that we have a basic understanding of how this laser pistol works I'm gonna fire it and I'm gonna show it to you now I'm gonna take this 9 volt battery off since we don't need anything for the audio circuit for it to work so here we go this thing is Switches beforehand. Hold on one moment, please. Alright, let's try this again. I'm going to turn on the on switch. Immediately, you see this indicator light blinking. That means this capacitor is charged. I have to wait for the other one to indicate one third of the capacitor bank is charged. They charge in rows. First row, second row, and third row. Once all third rows are charged, we can finally fire the laser. Alright, it's beginning to blink. That means it's one third charged. Now I have to flip these switches to charge the second one. Now 
now the second third is charging. If I flip one of these switches incorrectly, there'll be a big flash, and the capacitors will discharge within here. 400 volts, causing a big spark. So I better be careful. Alright, so the second third is finished charging. Now let me flip the switch for the third one. There we go. Now the last third of the capacitor bank is charging. You can hear a whining noise, which is the flash circuit of the cameras charging the capacitors. Almost everything from this project was collected from disposable cameras. Alright, now that the indicator light is blinking, we can test it out. Hmm, I need to find something to fire. Hmm. No. I'll be right back. Right. In my left hand, I have a dark surface. Now, I'm going to fire this laser at this surface, and you will see a burn mark on this surface. One problem about this laser pistol is uh, I wired it underneath of the uh, charging circuits. What that means, basically, is that uh, it doesn't always fire when I press the trigger. This can be fixed by a simple soldering job, but I was too lazy. Anyways, let's try it. Ready? Oh. oh, there we go. That was pretty quick. Now, with the lens, I could burn through metal. Small, thin metals such as razor blades, aluminum foil, or even... Or even, um anything. Anyways, so thanks for watching. Uh, be careful. This is the Homebrew Guru, and I'll see you next time.